Hi and welcome to the second disease out of six diseases. This is malaria. Malaria is caused by plasmodium, which is a protoctus. It is a unicellular eukaryote, which means it has a true nucleus. It has all the organelles you would think an animal has. It also has, okay? It is often referred to as a parasite because, well, it benefits itself, but it harms the host. Now, in humans, malaria is caused by these four particular species, especially 75% of the time, it is caused by Plasmodium falciparum, and then 20% of the time, it's caused by Plasmodium vivax, at the times, it's caused by Plasmodium malaria and Plasmodium oval. Now, all four of these you have to remember, but most of all, Plasmodium falciparum. Now, the appearance of this Plasmodium changes depending on life cycle stages. The life cycle stages sort of like, you know, butterflies having a caterpillar stage, a cocoon stage, and a butterfly stage, right? This organism has life stages that look different like this. There's a slender form, there's a little tiny form, and there's a big guy form. You don't need to know the names of them, it's fine. Now, um, during its initial infective stages, Plasmodium will be most motile and have this slender shape here in order to move quickly through your bloodstream. Wonderful things. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, what you should write in an exam. Now a vector, which you should know the definition for, is an organism that carries a disease from a person to another, from an animal to a human. Again, only female Anopheles mosquitoes will bite, only the females bite because it needs to supply its eggs with nutrients. Although um, malaria actually can also be transmitted through blood transfusions, use of unsterile needles, and can pass across placenta from mother to child, but um, that is very rare, mostly is through the female anopheles mosquito. Now let's talk a bit about the life stages, just now you saw the video, but let's talk about it in word format and what they want from you in the exam. Now again, for transmission, you always need to talk about what happens to the infected person and how the uninfected person gets it. So here, the mosquito takes a blood meal from an infected person and then goes on and takes another blood meal from an uninfected person, and that's how malaria spreads. But what happens in between and inside the person? So in the mosquito, in the first place, <clears throat> plasmodium gametes are fusing, it's multiplying, and they form infective stages. So they go from this big, large guy appearance to these long, slender forms. And when the mosquito, like you see in the video, takes a blood meal, it, um, it puts its mouth parts in through the, through the skin, secretes anticoagulant and saliva, and with the saliva, the parasite will enter the host together with the saliva. That's a very important point. It's always a mark point. <clears throat> After the parasite is long slender, mortal thing enters you, it enters the bloodstream, and then it goes to the liver cells. It matures there to form this little guy here, and then leaves the liver to enter the red blood cells. Now the parasite multiply in the red blood cells and then causing the red blood cells to lice and then once it lies and has more of them they can infect other red blood cells and then what is left is just uh, for it to be picked up by another mosquito in another blood meal in order to pass it on to another person so it is quite um it's quite a horror movie isn't it so this is a diagram here all the numbers here correspond to the previous slide our um, again, highlight to you that it's very important to know that, hey, where does the parasites go? Number one, it goes to the bloodstream, then it goes to the liver, and then it goes to the red blood cells. Okay, these three things are very important. Bloodstream, liver, red blood cells. Moving on. Now, what are the symptoms that we can sort of uh, expect from it? We can expect fever, so normal um, inflammation, sickness sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> Anemia, because a lot of red blood cells are lysing and there won't be enough red blood cells. Nausea, headaches, muscle pains, and sweating, and not clean. There's also a lot more actually. <clears throat> now, how do you diagnose these kind of diseases? Well, um, one suspected, and other than the symptoms, you can do a microscopical analysis of blood. And uh, if you put it under the microscope, this is something that you might see. There's this, this is... Um, a plasmodium in its mortal 
long slenders. And then that, there's actually also a dipstick test. So there is an uh, antigen test for malaria in the blood. You can just put a you can just put a drop of blood there and then it will show you whether it's positive or negative. So unfortunately, with malaria, there is treatment to help um, reduce the symptoms. There are anti-malarial drugs, and here is um, a few examples. There are many more. Quinine, chloroquine, and artemisin. Um, artemisin is a drug that China is very proud of because they found it through uh, Chinese herbal medicine, just so you know. Now, chloroquine is um, a drug, and what it does, it, it tries to inhibit protein synthesis and prevents the parasite from spreading in the body. If the parasite cannot undergo protein synthesis, cannot replicate. So yay for us. Now, uh, other drugs like progranil, which is not in this list, but it is a drug, inhibits sexual production of plasmodium in the mosquito. So if you eat it and another mosquito picks up this parasite through the blood, the mosquito cannot spread it other people because plasmodium in the mosquito cannot reproduce and cannot form infective stages. So um, you realize that every one of these drugs would be acting on a different part of the transmission cycle, which is very interesting. Now these drugs actually are used in in combination. We call this combination therapy. You use multiple drugs at the same time and this is used to prevent drug resistance. We have multiple things at a time. You attack the plasmodium from different angles and make sure it dies quick and it's not resistant to the drug. No chance for it to develop, no time. So other than treatment though, prevention is always better than cure. How do you prevent? Malaria. Now, there is no vaccine for malaria, and we, we'll talk more about this in chapter 11. Um, so, how do we prevent them? So, number one, we can use uh, prophylactic or preventing drugs. Preventive is equivalent to prophylactic. Um, for example, you can use chloroquine. You can eat chloroquine even though you don't have malaria to prevent yourself from getting it. Number two, you can reduce the number of mosquitoes. Think of dengue and how we try to reduce the spread of dengue. Uh, you, malaria is pretty much the same, reduce the number of mosquitoes. Here are a few interesting examples that CIE has suggested. Number one is to spray insecticides, which we all know. Number two is to spread all over the water surface, I misspelled that, to prevent mosquitoes from breeding, to breed fish that feeds on lava, interesting, which some of my aunties use. And even spray certain bacteria that can attack mosquito larva and kill them. Now the best prevention though, it is to prevent mosquitoes from biting because you can reduce the number of mosquitoes, but of course, um, there will still be a few running around, flying around, I mean. So best method is to prevent bites, use mosquito nets, soak mosquito nets in insecticides, sleep in mosquito nets, use mosquito repellent, um, don't expose skin when mosquitoes are active at dusk, for example. So everything you know about dengue prevention, you can use it here. Next, next uh, expert we need to learn is the global distribution. Now we look at this map here. This is a very typical um, distribution map. Uh, sometimes you will see this in the exams. You can see this red region here where malaria occurs in high frequencies, in many, many cases here, these orange bits are less so. But for all these areas, there is one common factor. The common factor is that, you guess it, it is near the equator. It is endemic, malaria is endemic in tropical and subtropical areas. And the reason is because the mosquitoes or the vector lives there. The vector survives and breeds in the hot and humid areas the best and it needs that still stagnant water to reproduce so it cannot be a place that is too dry. On the other hand, plasmodium also needs that temperature to reproduce. This is an important point that you can write in exams as well. Plasmodium can reproduce within the mosquito at <clears throat> temperatures above 20 degrees. It needs that temperature so it will not reproduce and will not spread. Other reasons that it's only endemic in these areas is also because outside the tropics, <clears throat> there were only a few places and it was easily eradicated, for example, in USA and in Italy. 
Now, malaria, like cholera and other diseases, also face other problems. Why do we still have malaria and why are we still battling it? Since we know all the treatment and prevention methods, now it's because we have trouble with drug resistant plasmodium. Some of the plasmodium, some of the parasites are no longer responsive to drugs. Means we need, this is why we need to use combination therapy, use multiple drugs at the same time to prevent this from becoming faster. We also need more new drugs. Number two is insecticide resistant mosquitoes. Have you realized recently that when you spray mosquito spray, not all the mosquitoes will die, some of them will still be alive. Now that's because mosquitoes have adapted to insecticides, um, most common being DDT. DDT is a most common insecticide used in many, many households, and a lot of mosquitoes aren't responding anymore. And besides, it's not responding, and this Insecticides also accidentally would kill other organisms, organisms like bees that are actually helpful for the environment also die to DDT. So basically our insecticides are killing things that we want to survive and killing and not killing the mosquitoes. Very bad. And even if they work, there has been problems because some local communities have reported this very interesting phenomenon. When they reduce the number of mosquitoes by spraying insecticides, this caused them to lose immunity to malaria because the mosquitoes, um, they're not there, so they cannot spread malaria around. So malaria is absent and therefore they have no immunity against it. And when the disease returned, they actually had a higher amount of cases and more vulnerable now. Than ever. And the last is the most surprising and the most interesting. Number three is global warming. And because places that are usually not so warm are now warmer, and therefore they are in general more warm areas for mosquitoes to breed and survive. And temperatures, there are more temperatures, more areas with temperatures suitable for plasmodium to reproduce in the mosquito's gut as well. So that is bad. But so the malaria, the, the fight against malaria is still ongoing and more education is needed, like through this video. So that's it for malaria. I'll see you next video. Bye.